like the walk-on music. You guys follow me around? Uh, we have a couple clients in the room, Ann and Mark. What would you think of that walk-on music as we came in to pitch you? All right. I've got a couple opening remarks. Uh, it was great to have the mayor here. Um, and I just want to, I, I took over hmm, six, nine months ago, something like that, as chairman. And you do this thing for two years. And you say, all right, what, what difference can you make? How, how can we try to set an agenda that's transformational in two years? How can I do something like Mitch Landrieu's doing in New Orleans? Well, you can't do it in two years. So what we did is we sat down and looked at it and said, OK, what, what should this industry stand for? How should we be and what should your association do? So let me just take you through that in a couple minutes. This is what we're doing. This is how we're organizing ourselves. And Nancy and team are just phenomenal, and they're doing a great job. So um, first and foremost, can you go back one? You missed one. Um, what we do works. I mean, this is something that we forget. This industry very simply creates demand by building strong brands. As we create demand, we drive growth in companies. As we drive growth in companies, we drive the economy forward, we drive jobs forward. So first and foremost, what we do for an industry, what we do works. Here's a couple stats. The US, we spend almost $280 billion in advertising annually. That's 20% of the total economic output in the United States. Each dollar spent generates nearly $20 of economic output. $9 in additional sales for every $1 spent. We create nearly 15% of all the jobs in America. And roughly 69 jobs are created for every million dollars that we spend in advertising. What we do as an industry works, and what you'll see today from McKinsey and also from McCann and some of the others is the beginnings of us telling this story better. What we have to do, our opportunity as an industry is conduct and continue to conduct deeper research on the true economic drivers that we create and change the dialogue with our clients that is not just about price and delivery but about value and continue to drive more growth. Secondly, we need to ignite a talent revolution because everybody in this room knows what we do is the human capital side. It's not algorithms, it's not technology. Those are things that we use. It's the human capital side. And guess what? Right now, all the smart kids want to go work in the tech playground. They're not coming here. We need to get them back. Look at some of these stats. 6.1 million jobs, 2011, 150,000 incremental jobs in the tech sector. When have we seen growth like that? And on the consideration side, we're not even in the top 10 of talent that's coming out of the top MBA schools. IDEO's at the very bottom. That's the only one that's close in our business. The good news is we beat lumberjacks on best place to work. Not by much, but we do. <laughs> and I don't know about you guys, but this is a pretty damn good business. I like this business. So why do we have this perception problem? We're going to address that a little later with some research that's fascinating. Um, so what we have to do is we've got to include the world outside of ourselves and build on diversity, not just an insular uh, advertising business that talks to themselves. And we need to augment our intellectual capital. And our community becomes, we have to make it the destination for people who want to grow business, create change, and do good in the world. Which brings me to the last part, which is we as an industry need to drive the dialogue, the agenda, the conversation around sustainability and shared value. What we already do, and Peggy and Mark will be coming up shortly, what we already do is so much that we give back. We get no credit for it. We need to build brands with a conscience. And if you don't, if you think that's just the four A's talking and you're not going to listen, maybe you listen to 
um, uh, some of the people that pay our bills. Coca-Cola, from the CEO. I say that the chief sustainability officer of the Coca-Cola company is me. I have not appointed another one and never will. That's me. They've agreed to host a client conversation around this next year in the sustain around the sustainability at this conference. Coke, look at, listen to some of these goals. Coke has established some bold goals, including going water neutral, returning as much water to the world as it uses, reducing the carbon footprint and by 2015, and eventually recovering all its packaging so it can be reused rather than sent to landfills. This is a CEO level conversation that we are not in. We need to be in this conversation because we help change behavior. We can help them achieve that. Another client of many of ours in the room, in Unilever. The great challenge in 21st century is to provide good standards of living uh, depleting, without depleting the Earth's resources or running up massive levels of debt. The central objective of Unilever's sustainable living plan, help more than a billion people have the environmental footprint, have it, of our products and allow us to source 100% agricultural. This is from the CEO. And this is a fascinating quote. If I project ourselves out five or 10 years, then I don't see Unilever as an advertiser. I see us as a solutions provider. I see us as a co-creator with the consumer of mainstream sustainable living. Neither the word nor the accounting line of advertising means anything to me. Procter & Gamble, same sort of agenda. Those are just a few of the clients. We as an industry need to get back in this dialogue and help drive this. We need to inspire the people who work in this industry because we're giving back and building brands with a conscience. We need to help our clients change the world. If we do that, we prove that this is an industry that works, that drives economic growth, that gives back and builds brands with a conscience. We are going to attract the best people that will help us sustain this business. Why would you not want to work in an industry that drives the world economy and does it with a conscience and cares, and it's a human capital business. This is the agenda that we're setting at the four A's, and everything that we do will be supporting this in the industry. So with that, I'd like to get on with the show. Our first speakers here today, um, to kick us off, we have two of the industry leaders. We have Mark Pritchard, Global Marketing Officer for the world's largest advertiser, Procter & Gamble, and Peggy Conlon, the President of the Ad Council, which many of us know and appreciate for the great work they do to truly make a difference on a lot of the topics that we care about. Mark and Peggy will talk about the power of ideas to create shared experience and the importance for brands to connect personally with people.